Okay, so let us begin uh, proceeding for today's class. Uh, we are discussing nowadays uh, scientific misconduct and uh, anything which pertains to our research activity and sharing of knowledge. Let me ask one question and I hope uh, uh, some of you can guess easily. Among all the scientific disciplines, wherever we conduct research, um, we might have felt one thing that uh, it's not the case that each and every area involves the uh, problem of all sorts of misconduct in the same uh, proportion. Assuming all the misconducts which we have learned so far uh, in research and publication, which area involves the maximum possibility of a misconduct? Which discipline has, let us say, kind of proneness to, to do mischievous acts or do problematic research? What do you think? I Among all the disciplines, field. yes, yes. You are suggesting it is a biomedical field, which is prone to have much of misconduct, right? Yes, yes. Uh, what is the reason for your thinking like that? Uh, you are right. If you go by data, if you go by data, then it is biomedical sciences, in fact, where we find uh, much of mischievous acts are going on. They do experiments in laboratories, or they manipulate data. They have the, uh, the environment like right, the... right. So that that data we have at international level, it is not just uh, uh, our guess. We have data for uh, mischievous behavior or misconduct, scientific misconduct. Maximum number coming in the biomedical sciences. I was curious to know what could be the reason for that. May I, sir? Yes, yes, please. Uh, so uh, I, this is my notion, but uh, uh, basically yes, it's please. all where money is involved, where your recognition is involved, I think uh, it's, it's biomedical research because you will get instant benefits from this particular research. Moreover, the amount of money that is on the pharmaceutical and the, with the growing world, with the growing I won't say pandemics, but with the growing population, the disease kind of a thing is increasing. Right. Uh, the, uh, the periodicity of the disease is increasing. There are a lot of things in our modern lifestyle which is affecting our body. And right. uh, here the money is involved because this costs a lot for maintaining it. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think so. this is maybe one of the reasons. Yes, this is, this is I think, uh, one of the reasons. But... Uh, Consider money is, of course, involved. And if I see in my university uh, the amount of uh, money which we receive uh, in, in projects, so our school of biotechnology is, I think, uh, topping the list uh, where we have crores of rupees project uh, going on. But then, uh, of course, money uh, is there in high volume because we require costly equipments, we require costly chemicals, we require uh, many expenses on uh, different things. And therefore, uh, somewhere I read that uh, the researchers committing mistakes or doing something problematic, uh, their motive is not uh, making money. So if, if we see that misconduct is motivated by uh, monetary gain, that is not correct. And for that also we have data. Just uh, think all those who are in the School of Biotechnology, uh, 
are they making money let us say in that terms are they making money because they have crores of rupees as project uh, i don't sir, i don't think so yes so it. basically it's not about making money hmm. whenever biomedical research is there you can't experiment on humans as per the policies you have to do it on animals there are a lot of stages of experiments that are conducted now this requires money this requires costly equipments they right. are there. but i'm saying whenever the recognition is there in a higher uh, horizon this mm. is where the manipulation takes place not at the researcher level not at the lower level but maybe at a level where it is going to be recognized and uh, when everything is every company is aiming for it there is uh, there is uh, there is uh, basically uh, i'll say uh, the customer right. involved or uh, the thing involved the various uh, companies involved there may be the thing okay so uh, uh kartik ji is in mechanical engineering anyone from uh, biotechnology uh, would you like to respond to kartik ji or do you have something to add in whatever he is saying do you agree with him or not yes, from biotechnology i think he is totally from right that we we need a lot of money to spend on the experiments the chemicals and the models the animal model that we have to maintain we have to spend a lot of money of them correct and the cell correct. lines also require a lot of money to maintain them hmm. so, so uh, there is of course uh, this requirement of use uh, expenses that is uh, true but what motivates to do misconduct in fact recognition if you do any any uh, research in any area of course you do uh, do get it, recognition it may be sir uh, greater greater compulsion in publishing uh, environment there uh, greater uh, greater competition there in publication sir. greater competition that is also true of other professions right it's not only in biosciences but uh, it is true of any other profession we have competition of course bataiye what could be the reason of scientific misconduct in uh, biomedical sciences that is the exact question if if misconduct is not associated with monetary gain and if we offer the argument of recognition etc that is uh, true of any field even in in uh, fields like philosophy if i write a fantastic book i get a worldwide uh, recognition in fact and that recognition is not just in the uh, community of philosophers but also uh, anywhere in fact the argument offered by philosophers uh, are used by judiciary they are used by politicians they are used by social scientists and all all uh, all all the places where you have the requirement of reflection right so means uh, you mean sir uh, that the policies and the framework are not strong enough to uh, conduct that uh, to stop that misconduct is what you are hinting at uh i'm not hinting at policies in fact i'm not hinting at anything uh i i just wanted to know what could be the reason for misconduct uh it cannot be just a uh, monetary reason because uh, scientists are not making lot of money in fact uh only companies are making lot of money and of course scientists are getting their share uh, but not in a very great way and recognition is uh, common and of course there may be some let us say variation i was asking to uh, pinpoint the reason which which is the prevailing let us say factor uh, behind scientific misconduct in biomedical sciences so maybe those who are in that area they they might think of some reason for that biotechnology wale bataiye bhai often sometimes when we perform experiment so we spend a lot of money on that experiment and time as well hmm. so to save that time and money sometimes some researchers manipulate the data but it's not a right uh, yes they manipulate they manipulate 
why we find safety. greater manipulation in biomedical sciences than in other I think they do it to save the money and the time. So maybe it does the flash that they have spent a lot of money and their time on that experiment. Almost it takes in several experiments, it takes nearly three to four years to carry out a complete research and experiment. So some, hmm. I know that is wrong, but some of them might be thinking of saving that time and money. So uh, saving time and money uh, could be one reason for uh, doing some shortcuts. Sir, uh, can I speak? Ah, yes, sir. Bully. Yes, sir. Sir, there is one reason also that in biomedical research or biotechnology research, we hmm. are dealing with uh, biological agents, that is natural uh, process. So, right. if a person can manipulate uh, their data, the other hmm. scientist, it is very difficult for other scientists to catch, uh, to catch his misconduct. Okay. Suppose you, okay. I okay. am uh, conducting a, an experiment of enzyme hmm. at 27 degrees centigrade, in my lab. Right. After right. one year, the parameters or different variables change, the activity mm. will be different. So no mm. one can um, challenge my results. Uh, yes, so that, this that is, is very nice. Is, this is the, one of the reasons that scientists right. uh, are, are, misconduct, are doing misconduct in their research. Because yes. they know mm. that they can defend their research very easily. Yes, so uh, the way I understand uh, you, you have rightly pointed out that it is difficult to catch someone uh, in in the yes sir in the uh, system so let us see that uh, uh, several vaccines are uh, available for this covid 19 right but right. some vaccines are very good some vaccines are uh, not right. doing so well um, yes yes so uh, we are if, dealing if with consider, people right if we consider uh, this part, this is a nice argument that uh, we have a kind of biological uh, variability. That is the concept I uh, got from somewhere. Biological variability uh, is indicative of different uh, results uh, in different biological organisms. And there uh, you find uh, uh, you have taken this example of vaccine. Uh, it, vaccine works in uh, many of the cases, but uh, some people face problem, right? And because of this variation in the result of uh, the scientific product, uh, there is some kind of, let us say, veil, veil of ignorance, under which a researcher, researcher can hide himself or herself. The, the scientific practices which deviate uh, deviate uh, seriously from uh, the common practices uh, accepted by the community is much more likely in the biomedical sciences than in other sciences. So I found this argument and uh, uh, I really uh, appreciate Arvind sir's point that this argument is something which is somewhere looming uh, in the background of our mind where we say that, okay, we can do anything. And uh, if something happens, then uh, uh, it's fine. And if it doesn't happen, we, we have something to blame, uh, not ourselves, but something else. And then finally, when you have result, then all the mischievous things which happened during the uh, procedure of uh, getting that result, uh, you feel that, okay, they, they were fine. Suppose there was some waste of chemical or there was some uh, misuse of money in purchasing things. And once you reach, let us say, once you reach Corona vaccine and you find that it's working, uh, in the majority of the population, given the observation made by one of our faculty members that uh, when we have a vaccine, we cannot claim more than 40% uh, efficacy of, of any vaccine. That, that was uh, his remark. And then he said that it is effective because uh, 
it it creates a kind of herd immunity and that that becomes a favorable situation so actually vaccine works only uh, maximally 40 percent i don't know how, how far it is correct but if this is correct then the the claims which we are making with respect to corona vaccine uh, would be a greater falsification falsification kahenge ya fabrication kahenge it would be fabrication right so whatever misconduct uh, we face uh, we have been discussing it that it could be due to uh, career pressure uh, it could be it could be uh, due to the uh, this factor that <clears throat> nobody catch us and therefore one may be knowingly doing something that this is not going to happen or or this is going to happen despite that one may be doing some futile uh, experiments and thereby wasting the resources and there is another factor that uh, if the experiment is so costly and you do it uh, in one location and you report it to any journal or any organization it is difficult to reproduce uh, that that result because of the money factor in fact a huge cost involved so if someone wants to verify whether you have done it correctly it may invite a lot more cost so it, it's on your trust the the scientist uh, wish to accept and this could also be a reason that uh, people are inclined to engage in uh, problematic uh, behavior because they know that ye itna aasan nahi hai ki isko koi verify kar lega aur iske saath saath jo verify kar lega ka ek tarah se hurdle hai uske saath saath ye hai ki एक थिंग वन थिंग परफॉर्म्स डिफरेंटली इन डिफरेंट बॉडी राइट सो इवन इफ समन समन नोटिस और ऑब्जर्व दैट देर इज सम प्रॉब्लम इन इन ए पर्टिकुलर कंजम्पन देन यू हैव ए वे आउट ओके इट इट कुड बी सम अदर फैक्टर्स नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ द नॉर्मल सिचुएशन इट कुड बी बिकॉज ऑफ सम एब नॉर्मैलिटी इन द सिचुएशन सो सिंस you are an expert you know what is correct what is incorrect in your area and with your expertise you you can do something and the others as laymen uh, they have to just accept and here comes the greater responsibility of uh, every researcher because you are expert it's a greater responsibility uh, on each of us as researcher that we don't mislead the layman we don't do problematic things and hide our mistakes from the common population because the common population is not knowledgeable enough to catch us right and here we require sincere effort a kind of integrity so that uh, despite the fact that nobody will catch us we don't do something which is problematic right and this is a challenge and you can take examples one day i have taken example that if there is a traffic and you have red light and see uh, there is no policeman and uh, there is no vehicle coming here and there even if some vehicles are approaching uh, many have tendency to jump Uh, jump the red lights right so if you you are sure that you will not be caught then uh, there is a tendency of violating rules or doing something problematic in fact it is generally uh, believed if you are religious uh, it, it, it is for you that god is everywhere right the divine eye is everywhere and it functions not through any other eyes but your own eyes so don't think that you are here and then divine is there and uh, that divine is watching no 
your divine is watching your misconduct through your own eyes and that is why irrespective of uh, any uh, great recognition etc if someone has done something very problematic the person feels guilty uh, at uh, core in fact the person feels guilty and this guilt feeling is something which is uh, diminishing our being in fact which which constrains our being our presence and that is something which is not naturally acceptable to any of us we don't want to restrict our being we want to expand ourselves we want to connect ourselves with many right and therefore we find uh, this proposal that wherever there is any doubt whether you should do this or not you just see by doing that are you going to connect to many or only few or you are going to restrict your relationship or you are going to expand your relationship and the proposal is that if you feel that by doing that you are expanding your relationship that is good to do and if you feel that it is contracting your existence it is it is uh, making you less of what you want to be then of course it's a problematic behavior and this can be felt by each of us we all are normal better educated let us say uh, individuals in the society and therefore we are in a greater uh, situation to do good or bad to the society now it, it's a matter of feeling responsibility towards the society that what we are going to do with our behavior uh, as a researcher particularly and as a human being in general so uh, with this remarks uh, i remind you one uh, beautiful saying in the indian tradition that atmanah pratikulani paresham ma samacharet whatever is not acceptable to you it is required that you should not do that thing to others whatever is naturally acceptable to you you have confidence to perform in that way with others and if it is not naturally acceptable to you it is greater responsibility on you that you should not engage in that right so natural acceptance is the greatest test uh, we have discussed one day and then uh, whatever way you want to do the practical dimension cannot be left out right so practical dimension in what way it is at the level of your experience whatever we are discussing in this class uh, it will have only limited effect if we are just uh, forgetting it after the examination the whole purpose of this uh, such kind of course is to remind you uh regarding certain general things certain uh, factual things but that is secondary the primary goal of this course is to sensitize you uh and uh, enable you to hit upon that core which is with this you know, with each of us it is there so it is just to remind you that look there is a conscience in each of us and it is that conscience which decides what is naturally acceptable to us what is not naturally acceptable to us and therefore whenever we are to decide whether we should take up such activity or we should uh, do it differently then of course this is the test and then the test is verified not externally that is a kind of expression of our external uh, behavior in fact it is realized deeply at our inner level right so uh, consider uh, this part and then now let us uh, come back to our uh, our next point which we are to 
discuss that is the presentation uh, of group d it's group d right i'm remembering if correctly assignment yes sir yes so we have group d who will be speaking on the best practices standards settings initiatives and guidelines and there we find uh, Hope, BAME, DOAJ, OASPA. So it would be a kind of uh, refreshing our mind uh, regarding whatever we have discussed in Group C. So I hope some of the questions which we raised uh, that day, we will be looking for some answer uh, today. So let us first hear the group uh -huh. who will present. Uh, sir, everybody is going to present. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, the main, I'll be the main host. Uh, so I'll okay. just show the. Uh, can I present right, right now, sir? Yes, yes. I hope uh, each of us is going to make note of certain points, and we will have some questions in the last questions, observations. Both you need to keep noting at every point. Uh, sir, is my screen uh, visible? Uh, it's visible, but you can make it little bigger. I think if you increase the percentage. Okay, I'll do that, sir. So uh, our article is best practices, standards, setting initiatives, and guidelines. That is the organizations like COP, VAMI, DOJ, and OSAPA. So uh, I'm just uh, basically taking it, scrolling it down because I'm going to present it in a PPT form. So uh, the uh, the article is best practices, standards, setting uh, initiatives and guidelines, COP, BAME, DOJ, and OSAPA. Uh, so very good morning to you and a very good morning uh, to all the PhD scholars. Uh, this is how we're going to present a presentation. Uh, introduction will be covered by me. COP will be done by Neha Gupta. BAME will be taken by Mr. Arvind Yadav. DOJ by Ishwak. OSAPA by Neha. Principles of transparency will be covered by Sohan, and finally, I'll be concluding. So uh, I'll just uh, come over to the introduction. Now, popular notion is, uh, as, as you have also heard the uh, professor, popular notion is publish or perish. So if you don't publish, you'll perish. That is the most common one thing one will find. So saying that if you want to progress in your careers, you have to publish. But there is a catch to it. When you publish 10 papers that are fabricated, then obviously it's not published or Paris, it's just greed. You might get away with it once, but not twice. The reason I'm talking about all this is that there is a variety of scientific misconduct, publication misconduct that happens all the time. Publication ethics is a system of highest ethical profession standards of conduct, governing the relationships between authors, reviewers, editors, publisher, readers, and creating, distributing, using scientific publications. These are serious issues of scientific misconduct in addition to the issue of predatory publishing, pseudo journals, predatory journals. So as researchers, we need to be aware of not only what is going wrong when we send our work for publication, but what me, we may do wrong. So we need to be right ourselves when we start doing our research where to publish, whom to publish, whom to operate, uh, uh, whom to basically approach in terms of any scientific misconduct. So there are such organizations uh, which might be beneficial to you. So these organizations uh, we are going to cover in next uh, 45 minutes or so. These include uh, the 
Committee of Publication Ethics, which is known as COPE. Uh, Word Association of Medical Editors, uh, uh, pronounced as VEMI. Uh, the DOJ, which is the Directory of Open Access Journals and Open Access Scholarly Publication Association. Now, uh, and their initiative in framing guidelines, standards, and pop, uh, policies on how to do or publishing a research paper on how to go about things, or whether it's your author, reviewer, or an editor. So foremost, how many uh, of you uh, have heard of these organizations? I know Group C might have heard of COPE and BAMI. Anybody else? Can you say yes? Anybody else? I don't hear a sound, so I think uh, very few if they are not saying yes also. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So I've heard just one. Uh, so means very less. So in next uh, few slides or so, we are going to talk, uh, talk about what are these organizations and what they do. Uh, so the Committee of uh, Publication Ethics, that is COPE, actually started off as a very small group of editors of two journals. It wasn't called the Committee of Publication Ethics, but the British Medical Journal and Lancet both editors knew each other and they worked in the same city of London. So they came over over a tea and said uh, what is happening in each other's journal. So that is how the COPE started off. Now COPE uh, basically uh, promotes integrity in publication ethics. It has certain core practices, best practices and flowcharts, uh, which I think Neha is going to cover that. Uh, but that's the only policing system we have in, uh, for the journal editors. Otherwise, they are holier than thou. You all know that. If you have something that concerns you related to publication ethics, you're worried about where to approach, it is co. Next is uh, VEMI. Now, VEMI, this, is, this organization was set up in 1965. And it's like, like any other professional society, it's free, basically a non-profit voluntary organization. And it fosters policy statements and recommendation on uh, publication ethics. Uh, it has uh, their medical journal editors and also frames a uh, curriculum for editors that members are motivated to obey. The role of the DOJ it basically comes into play when the researchers is uh, looking for a good open access journal to publish his valuable work. Now, OSAPA represents the welfare of the open access publishers throughout the world in every subject. It develops suitable business prototypes. Uh, tools and criteria to sustain open access publishing in all scientific, technically, technical, and scholarly disciplines. Now, for further covering up the COPE, I'll request uh, Neha to take over. Neha, please. Good morning, everybody. I'll be talking about the Committee on Publication Ethics. Talking about when it was founded, founded in it was founded in 1997. The Committee on Publication Ethics is a non-profit organization whose stated mission is to define best practice in ethics of scholarly public publishing and to assist editors and publishers to achieve this. COPE, as a charitable business, is governed by the trustee boards consisting of maximum of 12 members. COPE offers an expert voice in modern issues in addition to idea management on publication ethics and practical resources to educate and support members. Talking about COPE, it is a membership organization with over 12,000 members, primarily editors of journals and publishers. COPE operates, manages and governs organization with a small group of employees and active volunteers who serve on the trustee board and council. Next. Talking about the aim, why uh, COPE works. COPE's role is to assist editors of scholarly journals and publishers or owners in their endeavor to preserve and promote the integrity of the scholarly records through policies and practices that reflect the current best principle of transparency as well as integrity. COPE's purpose is to educate and advance knowledge in the method of safeguarding the integrity of scholarly records and its vision is to create a future in which ethical practice is the, in scholarship is the cultural norm. Next. Okay, coming on to the mission. The mission of COPE is basically built around three core principles. First, providing practical resources to educate and support its members. Second, providing leadership in thinking on publication ethics. And third, offering a neutral professional voice in its current debates. Next. Okay. 
come moving on strategy the strategic plan of cope is built on its mission to provide for scholarly probity it shall pursue the strategy by pledging its uninterrupted assistance as it is presently offering it shall also focus on inclusivity diversity and growth of its membership across all disciplines and regions it plans to provide prompt feedback for the progressing and demanding publication ethic issues encountered by its members it has four major strategies to complete its mission which are first one is range cope uh, will extend the range of their resources to meet the needs of all members irrespective of discipline and develop new resources to meet the needs of universities and producers of non journal scholarly products then we have reach cope will carry out a targeted campaign to increase and extend awareness of cope across all sectors uh, disciplines and geographical areas in particular those where they are currently underrepresented as well as within their current membership then we have responsiveness cope will be more responsive to ethical issues in scholarly work and it, its publication as and when they arise and then we have revenue cope will have expanded their membership and established more such sources of revenue to sustain their mission next moving on to the main topic that is the core practices which are provided by cope to solve various issues in 2017 the core practices were created to update the code of conduct these follow for every single party concerned with scholarly publishing inclusive of, of editors and their journals publishers and organizations it should always be noted that these federal uh, these practices should be used in conjunction with federal and global research and not in place of them that is we are to use these practices together with the regulations and not just ignore the regulations and follow these practices first is allegation of misconduct in this core practice regardless of how the complaints are laid to the attention of the publisher the journals must provide a distinctly defined mechanism for dealing with the same journals ought to deal with the wrongdoings earnestly both before and after publication policies should also address how to deal with complaints made by the whistle blowers then second core practice is authorship and contributorship there need to be a clear guideline in vicinity for authorship and contributorship criteria in addition to techniques for resolving viable disputes which permit for transparency about proportion of work contributed by each author then we have complaints and appeals that may arise a mechanism must be laid down in place by the journals for dealing with concerns about the publication its personal drafting committee as well as the publisher involved then we have competing interest and conflict of interest writers reviewers editors magazines and publishers must all have specific description of conflicts of interest and procedures for dealing with them whether they are discovered prior to or following the publication of the article then we have data and reproducibility data sharing regulations must be kept in place by the journals in addition they must also promote the usage of disclosing protocols together with the registration of medical evaluations and research plans in accordance with the industry standards then moving on we have a next uh, core practice that would be ethical oversight ethical oversight ought to include however isn't always restricted to regulations on consent to publication publication of vulnerable populations moral behavior of studies based on usage of animals moral behavior of studies based on usage of human subjects dealing with inclusive statistics and moral business or advertising practices then we have intellectual property all intellectual property policies including copyright and publishing licenses must be defined in detail writers and readers should both be aware of any costs associated with editing policies should be transparent about what constitutes pre publication and thus disqualifies someone from being considered it is necessary to define plagiarism and redundant or overlapping publications then we have journal management journals are required to provide a well defined and executed foundation for the efficient operation of an editorially independent journal including the business model policies procedures and software besides the effective administration and training of drafting committees and drafting and publishing personnel next we have 
peer review process. The peer review process should be listed and handled in a clear manner. Journals should include instructions for editors and reviewers as well as policies on various aspects of peer review, including the use of suitable review models and procedures for dealing with conflicts of interest, appeals and disagreement which might occur during peer review. Then last core practice as presented by Pope is post-publication discussion and correction. Post-publication discussions must be allowed by the journals either on their own platform through letters to the editors or any externally moderated uh, site like PubPeer. To, uh, journals should have processes in place to correct, revise or retract papers after they have been published. Moving on next, we have flowcharts which are provided on the uh, official website of uh, COPE. Cope charts are useful tools for editors as they show in visual form the general process of investigation, communication, and decision making. There are about 18 PDF flowcharts designed as a practical step by step guide for journal editors and covers them in brief. The, uh, the issues which are covered are redundant or duplicate publication and plagiarism, fabricated data and exchange in authorship, ghost, guest, or gift authorship, conflicts of interest general suspected ethical concerns and review conduct as well as how COPE deals with the complaints arising on their website. The official website of COPE provides pictorial flowcharts for different misconducts that may arise. These flowcharts are designed to help editors follow COPE's core practices and implement its advice when faced with cases. It should be noted that the Committee on Publication Ethics is a forum for editors of peer-reviewed journals to discuss issues related to integrity of scientific record. It supports and encourages editors to report, catalog, and instigate investigations into ethical problems in publication process. When a complaint is raised, COPE does not attempt to investigate nor to offer judgment on the rights or wrongs of specific allegation of research or publication misconduct. What COPE does is COPE's investigation and reports are focused solely on whether the journals involved behave according to the COPE code of conduct and best practices guidelines. The official website of COPE has many case studies. So you can refer to those case studies for a better understanding of how COPE handles various cases presented to them by authors, reviewers, editors, or other parties. Now, moving on, the next topic that is VEMI would be taken up by Mr. Arvind Yadav. Arvind, please. Mr. Arvind? Yeah, yeah, I'm Arvind. Yeah, yeah, mm. you're Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, my topic is VEMI, VEMI that is World Association of Medical Edit Editor. As Karthik has told that it is established in 1995 in Italy by a small group of members of International Committee of Medical Journals. Its long-term plan focused on encouraging research on medical editing and establishing global standard for medical editing. It has association, it has association of 1,000 publications and it has side content discussion of many issues relevant to doing research and publishing in developing countries. Topics include packaging, medical research, peer review, and small and non-English medical journals. Next. Now, what is aim or mission of this uh, VAMI, or what is the requirement to buy uh, its member to form this organization? Its main aim is to establish cooperation and communi communication among editors of medical journals all over the world and to upgrade quality of edition standards and promote professionalism in medical editing through education, self criticism, and self governance, and to assist research in peer review and medical editing. Next. Now, membership. Memberships are directly uh, towards editors of towards editors of peer reviewed biomedical journals and scholars who are doing research in various labs. The, uh, for scholars and uh, both uh, editors, the membership is free, and also the members are eligible to take uh, participate in committee selection and other development activities of the association. Next. 
Now, what are the policies? The various committees design various policies and like ethics and professionalism. This involves uh, the principle of transparency and best practices in scholarly publishing, professionalism, code of conduct, and medical journal editors, publication ethics policies for medical journals, and the relationship between journal editors in chief and owner. Now, second one is author. This uh, involves authorship, ghost writing initiated by commercial companies, identify pseudo journals or fake journals. Now, third one is con conflict of interest. This includes conflict of interest in peer reviewed medical journals and conflict of interest in um, peer reviewed medical journals, the world decision of medical editors position on a challenging problem. Now the third one is the fourth one is global health and politics. It involves geopolitical inclusion on editorial discussion, promoting global health, promoting global global health, the world association of medical editors, position on editor responsibility. Now, fifth one is peer review. This is this defines the definition of a peer review journal. And final one is other publication related issues, that is what will be the impact factor of a journal and the registration of clinical trials, means how can the clinical trial can be registered. Now next. Now VAMI committee. The administration of VAMI keep to a traditional model much like that of Council of Science Editors. And uh, and the bylaws of VAMI, bylaws of VAMI have constituted following committee, which have different functions. First one is education committee. Second one is ethics and policy committee. Third one is uh, finance committee, and uh, third one. after that it is membership committee, research committee, web committee. Now I I am explaining one by one. What is the function of each committee? Now, education committee, it is it, it develops a resource list of medical editors and has several ongoing projects. Ethics on policy committee, it develops policies for medical journal editors, provide ethics consultation, and has developed a number of publication ethics policies and ethics resources. Now, third one is finance committee. As name suggests, that it it manipulate or it manage the VAMI budget. Now, other now next one is research committee. This committee is responsible for evaluating research with VAMI, might involve and promoting and evolving research among its members. Now, the web committee. It is responsible for maintaining the website and internet communication between VAMI members. Now, next. Okay. Now, I request Karthik to. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll tell Ishwak to uh, uh, go over the DOJ. Okay. Uh, good morning to all of you. My present presentation is going to focus on DOJ, that is, Directory of Open Access Journals. Directory of Open Access Journal is the world recognized portal for high quality open access journals that are based on quality criteria that everyone can find and read on DOJ website. DOJ was launched in 2003 in Sweden with 300 open access journals. Today, DOJ has volunteers from all over the world, either as associate editors or DOJ ambassadors who contribute continuously to the list of journals. Journals apply and are reviewed and accepted into the directory by team of experts who are dedicated to raise the profile of ethically sound open access journals, which adhere to high standards of publishing. The number of journals included in DOJ has already increased dramatically and currently it contains more than 9,147 open access journals covering all areas of science, technology, medicine, social sciences and humanities. 3,300 journals have been removed after failed to apply for inclusion. DOJ contains aggregation of article level metadata. Next, aim of DOJ 
the mission of doj is to increase the visibility and ease of use of open access journals thereby promoting their increased usage and impact doj aims to be comprehensive and cover all open access scientific and scholarly journals that use quality control system to guarantee the content in short doj aims to be the one stop shop for users of peer reviewed open access journals next what doj does doj takes multi level approach to take questionable publishers education and raising awareness is vital so doj encourage best practices and adherence to standards giving journals a clear framework to operate within it changes the focus away from blacklist away from low quality journals doj distributes quality peer reviewed open access content taking the focus of low quality academic output doj creates strategic partnerships with like minded organizations lending the credibility to the combined efforts next the basic criteria for inclusion in doj includes number 1 basic journal information it suggests that title and url of journals are among the basic requirement for entry into the doj the journal title to be filled in shall be exactly the same to what is shown on the journal website in order to be included in doj journals must have dedicated website that should be displayed prominently that should display per prominently all the relevant information about the aim and scope of the journal information for authors including article processing charges even if they are not charged it must be displayed on website information about the contact person and information on the publisher should be responded with clear and accurate information url of journal's website shall be accessible and it is the link to the dedicated website of the journal other than to a collection of journals or any other services journals must have a validate issn the issn shall be clearly shown in the web page of journal the issn information can be verified automatically by doj via issn.org number second quality and transparency of editorial process DOJ values the quality publishing and emphasizes on quality and transparency of the editorial process. The journal must have an editor and editorial board. Editorial board should contain at least five members, which must be experts in the field. Names and affiliation for all members must be listed on the journal website. All the articles must pass through a quality control system that is peer review before publication. editorial process information must be included to know what kind of peer review does the journal perform and how long does it take from paper submission to publication and so on if there is no review process the journal is going to be rejected number third openness of journal open access statement should be clearly displayed on website open access journal means that all the content is freely available without any charge to the user users are allowed to read download print search or link to the full text of articles or use them for any other lawful purpose without asking prior permission from the publisher or the author number 4 content licensing the licensing terms must be clearly stated on the website licenses are fundamental they define what conditions apply to the use and reuse of the publishing content DOJ recommends the use of Creative Commons licenses for this purpose. Some publishers may use their own licenses. This is acceptable if broadly equivalent to Creative Commons licenses. Number fifth, copyright. As of copyright, it should be clear who owns it, as it might be retained by the authors or transferred to the publishers. In order to promote transparency of full publishing process, DOJ recommends that. terms of copyright are stated on the journal website copyright terms must not contradict the licensing terms or the terms of open access policy next how does doj spot questionable publishers the main problem with questionable publishers is that they may pollute the scientific record with non peer reviewed articles there are some signs that are relatively easy to note to spot questionable publishers these include low publishing quality low scientific quality issn not fully registered at portal issn.org journal's name is different from that registered at portal same url 
entered in every box on the application form, no peer review, uh, peer review process, and fake impact factors. Next. Support services offered by DOJ for authors and funders. DOJ offers support for choosing journals with approved and checked open access policies. DOJ only lists journals with good publishing practices. DOJ offers insight in publishing licenses used. DOJ offers data on copyright conditions. Support services offered by DOJ for readers and publishers. Next. It includes access to full text articles in money disciplines, web search interface, API search. DOJ offer API for metadata uploading to publishers. Over to Neha. Good morning, everyone. I will take over uh, Neha, OESPA. Uh, we have now uh, 10 minutes for your group, so uh, please do it accordingly. Uh, okay, sir, sir, we had a 45 minutes uh, presentation, sir. Uh, we uh, had six you, minutes. You, Regarding the information part, you can cut down so that you can finish. And we have another group for today's presentation, right? Okay, sir. Uh, we'll try to... Yeah, and we would like to hear some questions and responses also. Okay. I will take over OASPA. OASPA stands for Open Access Scholarly Publishing Association. For my convenience, I will call it OSAPA. So OSAPA is non-profit trade association of open journal and book publishers that was launched on October 14, 2008 at an open access day celebration and that was organized by a welcome trust in London. OSAPA was started with an absolute objective to concentrate on open access journal, but by the time it has ex extended its scope to encompass the matters related to open access books, and open access scholarly infrastructures. OSAPA constitutes a varied group of the institutions involved in OSAPA in open scholarship. Calling out the members, founding members actually, founding members of OSAPA, uh, these are uh, Biomed Central, Coaction Publishing, Copernicus Publications, Hindavi Publishing Corporation, Journals of Medical Internet Research, Medical Education Online, Public Library of Science, Sage Publications, Spark Europe, Utrecht University Library. Uh, OSAPA's founding member comprises of professional publishing organizations and OA scientists, scholars, publishers. Then we have OSAPA mission. So OSAPA is dedicated to what its purpose to try publicize solutions or results that accelerate the growth of open access and assure a diverse, dynamic and vigorous open access community. It exists to assist the development of growth in which an OA become principal model of publication for scholarly products. OSAPA is dedicated for scholarly objectives of developing and promulgating publishing solutions that facilitate open access, maintain coherence of scholarship, and promote best practices. So basically, OSAPA's ultimate mission is to support and represent the interest of open access journal publishers globally in all scientific, technical, and scholarly disciplines. And to accomplish this mission, the association will exchange information, set standards, advance models, advocate for OA publishing, educate the com community they serve, and promote innovations. Next. Next, we have OSAPA committees. Uh, OSAPA committees uh, assist and advise OSAPA board of directors in important areas. OSAPA committees constitute of membership committee, communication committee, and executive committee. First, we will talk on membership committee. Uh, this committee is at present is uh, chaired by Stephanie Orford. Uh, this committee exists for supporting and advising the OSAPA board of directors on decisions regarding membership. Then we have communication committee. This committee is chaired by Bernie Fallen. Uh, and this com uh, committee engages and outreach managers on decisions regarding its communication. Then we have executive committee. This committee is uh, chaired by Jennifer Gibson. Uh, this committee performs the function of conducting meeting with executive directors and discuss issues related to the management of the foundation. Next. Next is role and contribution. And before discussing uh, role and contribution, I would like to share a statement with all of you. And that statement is open access does, does exist simply 
for its own sake, but it should be used to achieve specific goals and advance the public good. Publisher should focus not only on collective action, but on collective impact. This very statement is given by Heather Joseph, Executive Director of Spark, on 8th conference on open access publishing that was held in Virginia in 2016. This statement purely depicts the purpose of OSAPA's existence. Now, I will move on with role and contribution. So, OSAPA generates awareness regarding the usefulness of open access publishing, emphasize policies that intensify and assist open access publications. They congregate community stakeholders to share experiences, talk over difficulties, and recognize opportunities in the extension of open access. OSAPA stimulate best practices and ethical standards in open access, applying scotless criteria and diligent appraisal to the membership and actively collaborating on key standard raising scholarly communication inventiveness. They bestow to the development and proclamation of publishing and related associated opportunities of open access content allows. OSAPA encourages the growth of diverse system, business model, and policies that reinforce open access publishing and stimulate a spirited and competitive market for authentic open access publishing in longer term. They work to assure an affluent and viable future for advantage of scholarly communities and its mem members they serve. And at last, measure the impact of research output for that uh, research group and institution. They would like to know who to fund. And for individual researcher, they would tell to know who to promote. And for individual article, they would tell to know who to read, what to read. So at last, I can conclude that OSAPA was actually created to develop an appropriate business model, exchange information, and educate both research community and public on the benefits of uh, open access journals. Now, I would like to hand over the presentation to Mr. Sohan. Thank you. Uh, hello, good morning to all. Principle of transparency. <laughs> the principle of transparency was devised by COPE along with BEMI and DOJ to help authors, editors, and publishers in streamlining the process of publication and formulation the quality research globally. And these principles also devise the best practice standard for scholarly publications and also evaluate membership application. There are 16 main principles of transparency which are given below. Internet site. The website of journal as well as the text it contains must demonstrate the high ethical and technical standards were followed. It must not include any information that could cause readers or writers to become confused, such as any efforts to duplicate the website of another journals or publishers. A statement of the aim and scope as well as particular definition of the readership can be found on the website. Include a suggestion for what a journal might Commanded for publishing, including authorship requirement, ownership, and <coughs> management. The journal websites, the ownership and management record must be clearly stated. Governing body. The journal must have editorial boards or other regulatory organization whose members are recognized, specialized in the subject area covered by the journal scope. It must not employ organizations or journals name that could mislead potential writers <coughs> and editors about the journal owner. The full identification and affiliation of the editorial boards or other governing body must be available on the journal website. Editorial team and conduct. On the journal website, the entire name and affiliations of the editors as well as conduct information for the editorial officer, including the full address, must made be available. Author fee. Any cost or payment required for manuscript processing or publication of items in the journal must be clearly stated in location where prospective authors can easily find it superior or submitting their papers for review or explain to author before any begin preparing their papers for submission. If no such charges is paid, 
this should be stated explicitly licensing and copyright the copyright policy as well as identification uh, identifies of copyright holder on all written paper must be explicitly stated in the writer guidelines similarly licensing conditions must be clearly shown on the writer's written publications including including html and pdfs and licensing detail must be explicitly defined on the website rule advertising if relevant uh, relevant the advertising journals advertising policies must be indicated including what type of ad advertisement will be considered who makes choice about advertising acceptance and if advertising are tried to contact our readers behavior or display at random advertisement must be maintained distinct from publisher material and must not link to editors choice or any manners direct marketing all direct marketing actions carried out on behalf of journals including the solicitation of articles must be relevant well targeted and information about the journal or publisher should be factual and not mislead the readers and writers next no i will hand over the to mr kartik kapoor for the conclusion of this article now i'll just take 2 minutes sir uh, uh, so yes, basically yes. Uh, 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 we have uh, gone through all the organizations uh, basically the, in the nutshell these organizations are uh, basically aware the novice authors on good publication practices i won't explain much provide guidelines for institution and department in framing their own principles and sops that is tender operating procedures for research publication ensure these journals to adopt publication policies to ensure ethical and responsible research is publishing published by protecting their rights unethical practice and scientific misconduct is discouraged and proper training should be imparted so that this doesn't happen uh, they identify the predatory journals based on the content and management of potential conflicts of interest and uh, transparency of journal processes and uh, including fees data fabrication plagiarism plagiarism image manipulation authorship issues redundant or, or duplicate publication is discouraged and identified these organizations can also take actions uh, basically against any member journal who doesn't follow this uh, research ethics and principles they open access they identify and promote open access journals that is what oe does uh, doha does uh, osapa does publishing good research work in quality open access journals is discouraged basically all these organizations talk about data and reproductibility reproductibility they talk about ethical oversight intellectual property how the journal should be managed peer review processes post publication discussion and correction so if you really look at it they talk about almost everything under the sun as far as publication ethics are concerned uh, sir we have ended our presentation uh, i hope you have learned thank something you. thank you thank you thank you kartik ji uh, it's very nicely organized and you managed it well when we come to this uh, publication part we see uh, there are authors there are editors then peer reviewers and publishers consider all these four main components related to our publication and all these four components have uh, varied objectives and uh, given their Uh, different objectives they are doing something which is the same for the society now this is something which is uh, interesting the main objective of each of us jo bhi kisi area mein kaam kar raha hai uska main objective hai social benefits generate karna society ko serve karna so i hope uh, there may be questions on this presentation but uh, uh, we will move on to the next uh, group presentation and i hope uh, there may be some common issues related to both the uh, presentations so we will raise the questions uh, in in last 10 minutes so let us have uh, some 20 to 25 minutes uh, for the next group can you manage within that time
group e we'll try, sir. so uh, please skip the portion which uh, is uh, already covered by let us say previous presentators and uh, present something which is additional in your so just to have time management and we don't want to miss anything from your presentation so you apply your wisdom and do it accordingly please your topic is conflict of interest violation of ethics in research authorship and contributorship hello good morning to everyone yes please go ahead so first of all i am showing our research writer after that mr tarik will take care of the presentation part because of our write up is bit lengthy so he will presenting in form of ppt yes yes that is good are you scrolling it down yes sir first of all i am showing the research write up in document form after that mr tarik will present it in ppt form Uh, our topic is uh, on the conflict of conflict of interest, violation of ethics, and research authors and contributors. Sir. So first of all, we will introduce. We know that uh, scientific publication have been established as the most effective means of communicating and disseminating scientific discoveries, findings, and as an indicator of research productivity. Sir, um, although these and other measures are used to evaluate research. Uh, Researchers, their indiscriminate use remains controversial due to the issues such as lack of informative context and the presence of possible bias towards nationality, gender, and age. So we know that publication of scientific papers is essential for the development of contemporary science and professional development. However, this publication uh, came with many commitments. Author should uh, must be familiar with these uh, procedures. Author should. Uh, should follow some procedures, author should be familiar with proper publishing procedures, author should be familiar with how to uh, should follow uh, good, publish, uh, good publication practices while avoiding scientific practices, misconduct, or fraud. Sir. Uh, regrettably, sir, uh, a competing publishing environment had led to unethical behavior in research and publication. Oh, so there's a need to detect, recognize, and educate research researchers on the importance of avoiding scientific misconduct and adopting good publication for practices. Sir, sir I am skipping uh, because the time is time factor is there. Sir, this was uh, about the introduction and definition and scope of conflict of interest, sir. 
Self confidence of interest may be described as a circumstance in which a person or group of persons is confronted by two uh, contradicting interests and thus can simply abandon or disregard interest as part of the mental analysis. In other words, conflict of interest refers to the set of circumstances in which one's judgment or primary interest, such as validity of research or patient care, is in, uh, inappropriately influ influenced by secondary interest, such as financial gain. So, conflict of interest might develop even when there is no financial or other interest involved. For example, sir, research, research, uh, researchers' religious convictions could impair their observation in the empirical study. In such circumstances, conflict of interest are Prejudices and those on biopsy research and affect study results trustworthiness. Although conflict of interest influences the ethics of research, conflict of interest themselves are not considered misconduct in research. But it involves research, it, it only violates research ethics if there is an improper action due to conflict of interest. And these are the types of conflict of interest. The uh, first one is financial con conflict of interest, second one is personal conflict of interest, third one is intellectual conflict of interest and fourth one is conflict of interest from responsibility sir now financial conflict of interest it is the conflict of interest deriving from the researcher's financial benefit in, in conjunction with his or her study sir and the personal conflict of interest is when conflict uh, stemming from personal relationships affiliations personal disputes or competition then intellectual control of interest uh, involves those conflicts between religious or moral convictions of the researcher, worldview, or theoretical viewpoint of the research. And the fourth one is conflict of interest from responsibility. It involves conflict of interest between the researcher's involvement in education, charity, or other extracurricular activities, and is uh, and in his or her studies. So resolution of conflict of interest. So what uh, uh, should be done, what, uh, what is the solution? Conflict of interest must be addressed rather than eliminated. Conflict of interest should be controlled by researchers, researchers, study organizations, the academic society publishing the articles, and the institutions supporting the study financially. Resolutions should be submitted as per numerous regulations and norms. There are, uh, these are grouped into two categories. The resolution are grouped into two categories. One is resolution for protection, and second one is mandatory public disclosure. Uh, resolution to prohibition uh, is basic, uh, basic conflict of resolution either entirely avoids conflict or situation conflicts or limits the severity of disputes by following the different restrictions and standards in, uh, in, in the mandatory public disclosure the study uh, impartiality can be prevented due to a conflict of interest the researcher may be mandatory to report the conflict of interest in advance uh, this uh, part I will skip yeah, because there's a time like that. Uh, there are these are the various types of conflict of interest and the, the resolution. The sort of conflict of interest uh, there's that uh, this is the table shown here. Actual conflict of interest, and there are no actual conflict of interest. And these are the divided into financial conflict of interest and non-financial conflict of interest. Is financial conflict of interest or conflict of interest is in, uh, uh, derived from the researchers' financial benefit that I already told you and non-financial conflict of interest. Or uh, uh, that in uh, non-financial conflict of interest, uh, or that uh, doesn't involve any financial gain or uh, other. Hello, sir. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. please go ahead. Uh, financial, uh, for example, we'll give an example of the uh, financial conflict of interest. For example. A researcher performs a study on the uh, dangers of smoking and obtaining financing from a cigarette company. There is a there is, there is a conflict of interest, but that is financial. You are um, uh, doing research on smoking, and say at the same time you are obtaining financing from cigarette company. Because that involves the financial conflict of interest. What should be the resolution? Uh, the researcher should uh, either does not experiment or reveal the frame that uh, the researcher. Uh, does not uh, resolution individual resolution should be the uh, research he or she either does not experiment or reveal the premise that sponsored the fund so there is a conflict of interest and resolution the academic association that publishes the journal requires the researcher to identify any sponsoring organization during peer reviews or publications 
then there's the second uh, uh, type that is non financial conflict of interest it may be like the academy uh, the researcher is asked to participate as an external member of college faculty hiring committee when his or her advisor is applying for the post here uh, there is uh, no direct financial uh, benefit uh, uh, or financial conflict involved but there is conflict what type of conflict is uh, the researcher uh, uh, the researcher is the member of the college faculty hiring the committee but there is uh, is the member of the community uh, when his or her advisor is applying for the post so there is a uh, interest he may he may there wo wahan pe favoritism kar sakta hai sir this is the uh, the other uh, other of potential conflict of interest when there may, there may be not in present there may be no conflict of interest uh, but in future there may arise conflict of interest that is potential conflict of interest and that is uh, there is apparent conflict of interest apparent conflict which is, which is clearly visible that there is conflict of interest and it should be avoided while it's not publication ethics while it's not publication ethics refers to the moral problems about acceptable and improper conduct in the context of the social dissemination the publication environment is continuously evolving and the space of change has recently increased sir the rise of digital financing fast emerging of new genres and expanding international scene are all transforming the character of publishing as a result of this there are growing concerns about the ethics of academic publication the growth of journals in particular has placed significant strain on the reviewing system including peer review and the role of editorial board members editors and publishers furthermore with the rise of predatory journals in publication there is additional concern about public assurance of authenticity of legitimate peer review publications Furthermore, researchers are under growing pressure to publish high-impact journal papers and pressure pressure journals to have a high-impact paper. This variable is often crucial criteria for university professor uh, progression. This need for high-impact elements may drive some authors to engage in unethical conduct to increase their publication records. However, it has led to the recognition and greater attention to many ways in which authors may breach ethical publishing standards. the section describes and this section describes the, the problem in problem in publication ethics uh, and it focuses on the publishing journal articles uh, there is the debate regarding the different kinds of the, uh, responsible behavior and accountability during publication scientific misconduct that is the violation of research is defined as the breach of standard norms of scholarly conduct and ethical behavior in scientific research publishing misconduct misconduct by authors in scientific publishing is harmful to the integrity of whole system and is considered unethical sir and these are the role and responsibilities of the authors uh, the violation uh, this the violation of ethics of unethical practice when we uh, draft any manuscript and that draft is uh, uh, reporting with the um, uh, results random random as a uh, clinical results unpre unpredictability uh, what should be done to avoid this misconduct all paper is describing clinical trials should be written as per the consort norms the consort standards uh, here for standard of reporting trials uh, consolidated standards of reporting trials and there is another uh, unethical practice that is ethical approval when we when we take the project without uh, any approval without uh, getting the approval from the institutional ethics committee what should be done before beginning the research we should uh, have approval uh, by the concerned authority or here uh, by the Uh, concern at our here it is uh, institutional ethics committee the names of the iis is it, that is institutional ethics committee and the permit member should be included in the document so so that we can avoid this misconduct it for everyone and then then that is another unethical practice that is redundant and duplicate publication so so major uh, publishing is based on the same data collection and results that have previously been published and the author tries to cover duplication that is another misconduct sir minor uh, and salami slicing that is going divide the uh, whole target into different parts and then publish it and what should be done what should what, what should be the uh, responsibility of the author that he, he should he or she should avoid this the submission letter mentions uh, there should be a mention that the work has already been published and provides editors with relevant material copy avoid publishing incomplete conclusion or finding this then there is another misconduct that is authorship the sequence of authors there are uh, different types of authors ghost authors guest authors uh, They, they have already been defined by the other uh, under uh, group members and the what should be done to avoid this decide in advance the minutes of meeting all authors must adhere to the uh, authorship requirement is decided by icmd it stands for international committee of medical journal editors 
and plebism it has been already defined by uh, several uh, our colleagues uh, and uh, there is, it, it involves copying up significant portion of work or in uh, idea or uh, you may copy uh, some someone's idea and copy someone's data and minor plagiarism uh, involves copying up few words without entering the material and uh, what uh, should the author do to avoid this appropriately cite the source and uh, put the copied sentence inside the quotation mark so that uh, this uh, uh, appropriate individual can get the credit grant consent to the use and published in expression that should be done and now uh, this is author spent contributor issue the uh, i will hand over to presentation to signature sudeep kumar he will present. next is authorship and contributorship authorship who will be the author? So, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, it defines authorship as the state or reality of being the person who authored a certain book, article, play, or other book work. In a nutshell, it refers to the person who creates a work of art. Authorship may have a significant impact on your academic, financial, and entire career. While authorship in scientific papers has numerous benefits, it also entails significant obligations. The author's primary job is to ensure the integrity of the scientific publications and establishing proper authorship. There are three principles of excellent authorship, acknowledging scientific research as a team activity, giving credit to everyone who deserves it, and safeguarding the authors from scientific malpractice or misconduct. By identifying authors on a scientific article, the relevant persons get credit for the work and are held responsible misrepresenting a scientific scientist linked to their work on purpose is seen as a kind of misconduct that affects trust in the works reporting while there is no standard definition of authorship an author is often understood to be someone who contributed significantly intellectually to the work there are many standards authorizing rules the most common being the international committee of medical general editors icmje with the development of unauthorized authorship, there is growing concern about the ethics of publishing. The most significant factor seems to be lack of understanding and awareness of the authorship standards and what activities constitute unethical behavior. There are most generally used and popular criteria in biomedical publications to be eligible for an authorship. All of four criteria must be satisfied to become an author of a publication or a research article. First one is your significant contribution to the work's idea or design or the collecting analysis or interpretation of data for that work. Create, number two is creating the work or significantly reviewing it for the essential intellectual substances. Number three is final approval of the published version. Number four is agreement to be held responsible for all work component to ensure that any issue about the accuracy or integrity of any component of work are adequately examined and resolved. Next is, what are the accountabilities and duties of the authors? So there are some accountability and duties of the authors. The authors must fulfill their obligations and do their tasks correctly to maintain the confidence of readers and society. The Committee on Publication, Publishing Ethics scope has proposed detailed worldwide rules on the authors' standards and responsibilities. Several of the authors' primary role are mentioned in this section, like originality. The work must be based on an original concept. And if it is not, the source of the concept must be recognized and given in the prop paper. The work should not be submitted to more than one general simultaneously. Copyright regulations should be fully respected and followed. Permission must be obtained in advance of duplicating any item or portion thereof. Slammy publications and publishing overlap should be avoided or disclosed to the writers or readers. Second is conflict of interest. Conflict of interest refer to a scenario in which one's personal or professional interest may influence the results of a study or publish articles. It is critical to disclose any conflict of interest to the editors and readers who may then make their own interpretations and judgments about that. Third one is honesty and transparency. Researchers should honestly and without falsification or modification provide the facts and interpretation it is not commonplace to hide findings that cannot be explained or inconsistent with the rest of the paper's finding. It is highly discouraged practice. All findings must be reported, and if a finding cannot be explained, a statement must be made to that effect. All financing sources must be disclosed, as well as the sponsor's involvement. 
Additionally, it is author's responsibility to ensure the contributions are appropriately recognized. Next is responsibility. The writers must demonstrate that they are prepared to accept full public accountability for the paper's validity. They must also guarantee that the necessary permits and registrations are obtained for the study endeavor. Throughout the research and publication, author must adhere to conventional and statutory ethics. The author's position or status often develops due to the debate and aggregate among agreement among all prospective authors in a research group, but there may be conflicts and conflicts that must be handled before work is prepared or published. If such agreements are not addressed, they may result in retractions after publication. So it is a serious issue. Next is contributorship. So a person who is contribute to the paper, how can we identify that? So for that, a person with a research function may be a contributor. Authorship definition is not universally recognized and differs across disciplines with various standards. The connection between the contributors and the research may be highly complicated and many people may have played a significant contribution but may not fulfill the forms of or criteria of authorship requirement. Mentioning their individuals in the acknowledgement section alone, typically a brief remark after the article may not reflect their work fairly. Sometimes their input may be significant and would certainly deserve more attention credit than just recognition. Ignoring or diminishing significant contribution leads to disagreement and harm the moral of researchers and reputation of researchers and writers and the scientific community. Therefore, each individual's precise contribution must be explained fully whether it amounts to authorship or not. It avoids the issues mentioned above. Many journals have already begun this. It may be an educate through and improved profiling techniques are needed. The idea of contributorship was developed by the former deputy editor of JAMA, Remold Rani. In 1997, because of the challenge of identifying and differentiating authorship from non-authorship in the contemporary scientific environment, the contributing model may assist the assist to equitably recognize all contributions even those who often don't meet typical requirements of authors that is statistical scientists laboratory workers professionals writers etc is generally recognized the denial of authorship like gift ghost guest authority and the disagreements over the author's order may be avoided yet ensuring responsibility in the document so that's for to overcome this difficulty or contributorship we, the credit system was developed and founded in 2012 by a group of general editors and researchers sponsored by the welcome trust and harvard university it contains a standard for providing information about the contributors in the metadata used for scientific papers more than a dozen people publishers including selfrace polos and springer currently employed credit system. It is implemented by Arise Editorial Manager, Reverse Valley Review, and the COCO Foundation, Gates Open Research, and Welcome Open Research Publication Management Systems for connected platforms. Each organization enables paper authors to input each author's contribution type by checking items or checklist and potentially detailing a contribution in greater depth using free text. So for an example, if an article had four authors and is published in a journal that demands a credit-based statement of authorship responsibilities and contributions such as, for example, author A that prepared the idea, methodology, validation, formal analysis, research data, curation, writing, original draft, visualization, project management, and funding acquisition. And suppose for author B done the authoring review and editing as well as supervision, author C done or is responsible for resources, writing, review, and editing, supervision, and funding acquisition, and author D is responsible for the following tasks like conception, writing, reviewing, editing, visualization, supervision, and financing acquisition. So like this, we can divide the contributorship to each author, which author did what part. So last is conclusions. So in conclusions, like we say, we can say that human subjects research studies help to improve the medical and health sciences, such as studies over valuable information 
on the safety and effectiveness of novel treatment therapy medicines or technologies however the inclusion of human subjects raises the danger of damage to the participants as a result clinical trials are closely examined and controlled researchers should adhere to applicable international standards and local state laws for the protection and welfare of human subjects and there are many other conclusions which are drawn from this article and which are mentioned like that a point one is the unethical activities in publishing scientific research can be avoided when inexperienced writers should be made aware of proper publication procedures each, each institution or department should follow the guidelines of pope or icmj for publications and create their own sops for authors who are actively engaged in research unethical author behavior for scientific misconduct should be avoided and handled via proper training and supervision Point number two is like conflict of interest can occur when a business, legal, or professional association between researchers or the sponsor with other organizations or people could affect the research. The complete relevant relevant of information is essential while submitting a manuscript to a journal to avoid any conflict of interest. Conflicting interest, either financial or non-financial, should also be mentioned in the cover letter of the submitted manuscript. third point is plagiarism in the scientific field often known as scientific theft is an unethical profession practice that may violate copyright laws it is without a doubt preventable with the proper attitude towards knowledge awareness and effort next is the authorship of papers has attracted attention in the recent years owing to a lack of norms governing how authorship should be handled it is commonly known that numerous journals make authorship standards public yet even with this knowledge the occurrence of gift and ghost authorship remains a concern the last point is the order of the writers is determined by the quantity and significance of their contributions a person who had a part in the studies qualified to be considered as a contributor all contributors role must be acknowledged in the publication these are the references thank you and now the session is open for any query if anybody has uh, it's very nice in fact uh, we had some apprehension regarding this uh, contributorship and authorship so i hope uh, the suggestions which you have made here are very useful and wherever there is any such Uh, issue that who should be recognized as author and in what order the authorship should be arranged so i hope these advices are very uh, useful and then uh, this notion of contributorship uh, i i find this is very interesting that uh, to what extent a contribution uh, doesn't amount to authorship right yes. and you you have really pointed out uh, the definition of an author uh, who is the creator of the work of art right yes. and who has contributed significantly intellectually uh, this is uh, the second thing and then the or, or we can consider this one point so someone who has created the work of art and contributed significantly intellectually the second point is the person who is supposed to take the responsibility of all the things which are appearing in that uh, publication article so this responsibility part is important i think uh, a many uh, many conflicts can be resolved that who is who is capable of holding the responsibility regarding the claims which are made in the publication and i think there may be uh, different curiosities but uh, since our class time is over i don't know if you have some other engagement what should we do shall we take up question answers uh, right away or uh, some of you have got some engagement if you have got some curiosity regarding uh, both the presentations so we can take up one or two questions i think yes, sure, sir. Sir. so we have a, so we have a quiz at 11:15 sir can we leave the session ah, now that that's why i am reserving it so
Shall we shall we take up then questions uh, in the next session? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Yeah, and please please uh, keep your questions with you and ask it uh, in the beginning of the next session. So the next session will be again having two presentations. So half an hour we will spend on our uh, question answer regarding this session. And then uh, one and a half hours we will have uh, presentation. So please prepare half an hour presentation uh, each group. So we can have 30 minutes presentation for each group. And then half an hour will be kept for uh, question answer. Okay, so let us now close this session here. Thank you, all the presenters. Uh, it was a nice learning, in fact, for all of us.